Olá, boa tarde a todos. Eu sou Ricardo Lopes Cardoso, coordenador do mestrado profissional, mestrado acadêmico e doutorado em administração aqui da Fundação Júlio Vargas, Escola Brasileira de Gestão Pública de Empresas, a EBAP da FGV. E só deixar bem claro que ah, eu autorizo a Fundação Júlio Vargas a gravar e a disponibilizar o audiovisual dessa sessão de webinar de hoje nas né, suas divulgações sobre o programa e também, é claro, aqueles que aqui participam ao fazerem perguntas pelo slide, né, digitando a pergunta, no final eu vou ler as perguntas, se você quiser se identificar, eu leio o teu nome é, e aí, é claro, você autoriza a, a utilização também desse, dessa, das suas perguntas e das minhas respostas na sessão de perguntas e respostas ao final do evento. Uh, então, vou começar o compartilhamento de tela, que eu tenho aqui uma apresentaçãozinha. Espero que já estejam vendo. E é, eu vou agora me mudar para o inglês, uma vez que o evento é todo oferecido em inglês, né? então faz todo sentido a gente fazer essa apresentação, esse webinar já em inglês. So welcome everyone to this webinar session of our Master and PhD program in administration from Getúlio Vargas EBAP. My name is Ricardo Cardoso, the coordinator of the program, and I hereby allow FGV to use the audio records of this session in future disclosure of the program, as well as you are invited to ask your questions through Slido, type in your questions there, After the, at the end of the session, we will, I will read your question and answer them. So if you want to identify yourself, I will be happy to read your name as well. And then you are allowing us in FGV to disclose your questions and my answers to your questions uh, later on on the website. Okay. Um, the program coordinator is myself, as I just said, and the, I work with a team composed of Daniel Santos, the program manager, Dave, uh, Blanche Davis, uh, the program assistant, and Vanusa, Danusa Vasconcelos, the at the admissions officer of the program. Uh, introduction about the program, the program of academic Graduate Studies in Administration at Fundação Júlio Vargas EBAP is composed of the Master and the PhD in Administration. Both courses are interconnected and they share the same values and principles. Uh, and the school, EBAP, is accredited by EFMD, Equis, and AACSB. And the program is evaluated every four years by the Brazilian federal government, CAPES, Uh, which assesses the quality of the programs, the highest grade CAP is, uh, marks to the programs is number seven, and we are very proud to for have received the highest evaluation from CAP, so we are a program graded at grade seven. Talk about the purpose. Uh, as I said, both programs or the master and the PhD, they share the same values and principles. However, they have different purposes. Uh, the master in science in administration program has the purpose to prepare students for PhD programs, either at FGV, EBAP, to continue working with us during the PhD, or at any other distinguished institution in Brazil or elsewhere in the world. As well as if you want to pursue the master in account in administration with us, but you wouldn't like to continue with your academic career as a PhD student, uh, it's okay. Our purpose is in addition to providing students the background to start their, their PhD programs to go to the job market. And the main purpose of the PhD program is to prepare students for academic careers as research professors. Uh, they can perform their research their researching career at universities or any academic institutions in Brazil or abroad or any other relevant think tank. But notice that we aim that 
those that graduate from our master program really engage in a PhD after all. And then you might ask, and why would you be interested in joining us for the master or for the PhD program in administration at ABAPI? We arranged some of the main reasons why you should uh, consider studying with us under these four big pillars. The world renewed faculty that we have, the quality and rigorous training we offer, the inspiring academic experience that we also offer at ABAPI, and the quality of our students, top-notch students. I will explain these four pillars right now. Uh, what do I mean by uh, road renewed faculty? Uh, first of all, our faculty members, all of them, all of us, have international experience, relevant international experience. Some of us uh, born abroad, uh, completed all their academic studies abroad, either also the PhD program and worked abroad for a while and then joined the BAPI. Some are Brazilians that went uh, into, into international program to do their master and or their PhD programs and then returned to Brazil. Others, uh, although took their PhD from Brazilian university, uh, went, to the, to, went internationally to, to work there. Uh, and then after a while as a, a professor at a, any university outside Brazil returned to work with us. And we also have uh, all of us, in spite of the, uh, where they graduated from, uh, all of us work as visiting schoolers frequently outside the universities, either in, the U, in Europe or in the US or anywhere else outside Brazil. That's why we mean by the world renewed the faculty based on the, our international experience. But it goes beyond that. We do international research. Our research is published in international journals, in top, uh, top journals, top international journals, not only any international journals, but the best journals in the field. Uh, and we are also very productive, our faculty, publishes frequently in high impact international journals. Uh, and the productivity of the faculty members is really remarkable. I'm very proud of that here. About the quality and rigorous training, the quality of the training that we offer is very high level, I, I might say. Uh, as you are noticing, that's why I'm speaking Portuguese here, it's because the program is fully taught in English. And we decided to to offer the course entirely in English for one main reason. English is the common language of science. Uh, the top journals, either Brazilian journals or anywhere else journal, if they are really a top journal, they publish research in English. Uh, so in order to reach uh, the international audience, we need to publish in English. And then we are quoted by other schoolers from anywhere, anywhere in the world. And that's why we really structure and offer the courses all in English, mainly because, as I said, since English is the common language of science, and the papers that we read and discuss in classroom, they were all published in English. And then we will write our own papers also in English. So it would make no sense to read a paper in English, discuss it in Portuguese, and then write it back to English. We would get less lost in translation. In order to avoid that, our production process is all in English. And then uh, we are also preparing our students to apply for a PhD abroad or to apply to the job market internationally. On the top, but the quality of the program definitely is not driven by the, English, the language you speak here. Uh, the main point is based on the fact that the program is a full-time program. What do I mean by a full-time program? Is a program that is designed for students that are 
fully committed to the program, 100% committed to the program. So the master students, since they enroll in the program, they have 21 months to conclude the program. So one year and nine months to present and defend the master thesis. While PhD students have four years to conclude the program. I mean, since enrollment, they have 48 months to defend their PhD dissertations. And the quality of the dissertations and thesis that our students defend here in the program, uh, considering this time constraint, definitely demands a full-time dedication to the program and to the research itself. Talk about the structure of the program. For master students first, master students might take at least three method courses. They are the Statistics 1A, Statistics 1B, and either Qualitative Data Collection Analysis or Comparative Historical Methods. In addition, uh, master students might take at least four courses from the track he or she chooses. The program offers students four tracks. So you might choose one over those four tracks uh, to pursue your main field of research. And might also take five elective courses, uh, at least elective courses, five elective courses. And what do I mean by elective courses? Elective, elective courses might be any course in addition to the minimum method course you might take and or any course in addition to the four courses from the track you choose or any other course from any other track that the school offers. It's also considered elective courses up to two courses that you may take outside the program. You may take any other two courses as elective courses at any other FGV school, like the economics school, the school of law, the school of math, the school of history, whatever you prefer. And also you could take courses outside FGV at any other university that offers a master program, if you are a master student, or a PhD program, if you are a PhD student. So the elective courses up to two you may take outside the program, considering that it's still a master or a PhD program. So these are all the courses you might take. In addition to the graduate seminars, master students may attend to one year of graduate seminars. This is uh, in a quarterly basis. So four quarters per year, in total one year, attending to and participating actively on our graduate seminars. And, there is a supervised research seminar. Uh, the supervised research seminars are this orientation, the, the research discussions that you have with your supervisor about your thesis or uh, dissertation. So this is the, how the program is structured for a master's student. In total, there are 34 credits that are equivalent to 510 hours program. You see in the following slide that the structure of the PhD program is quite similar to the structure of the master program. Uh, PhD students might take six method courses, uh, at least. If you take more method courses, they will count as elective, those that exceed the minimum six. Uh, may take, might take uh, five courses from the track the PhD student choose four elective courses and the same rules apply here. Elective course may be additional method courses to those six or additional research track courses in addition to those five or any other course from any other track from our program or you may take up to two credits outside the program in another PhD program. PhD students as well as master students might take one year of graduate seminars and take four credits of supervisor research seminars discussing your dissertation, your research, PhD dissertation, research, your dissertation with your supervisor. In total, the PhD program 
is composed of 48 credits that are equivalent to 720 hours. And how about the research tracks I just said? We have four master students may take at least four, uh, how many? Master students may take at least five courses, sorry, four courses from the research track and page to the students at least five courses from the research track. And which are those research tracks? Institutions, policy and government, coordinated by Professor Carlos Pereira, behavioral and decision sciences, coordinated by Professor Ishania Graval, strategy management and organizations, coordinated by Professor Olivier Bertrand, and finance, coordinated by Professor Lars Norden. So I do exhort you all that are attending to this webinar, that was watching to this video, to search on our website, take a look on our program. For instance, take a look on the faculty of this program, see which kind of research we do here in the program, where we used to publish our papers, uh, and also read about the research tracks. There are a small description of the main goal of each of these four research tracks, and then understand them. If you have any doubt, you can contact myself or you can contact the track leaders if you have questions about the that kind of research we do there, okay? You are welcome to uh, get in contact with us if you have any doubt. And still talking about the quality of the training, I might talk about the research centers that FGV and the EBAPI has. EBAPI at FGV has more than three research centers. In this slide, I bring the three research centers that are closely related, closely connected to the master and PhD program. Uh, I'm talking about the Center for Behavioral Research in Rio, coordinated by Professor Eduardo Andrade, uh, the Center for Banking and Financing Research in Rio, coordinated by Professor Lars Norden, and the Applied Research Center in Account and Analytics, coordinated by myself. Again, I do exhort you all to take a look on our website, to go to the Research Center's page, read about the Research Center that most interests you, and then you get an idea, much better idea, of what we do, what we do within the research centers and how the research centers can help, uh, really helps uh, master and PhD students. I'll give you just one idea here, just one example. Any of these research centers develop all of these research centers develop uh, applied research in administration, in their respective field, behavioral, decision-making, finance and banking, and account and analytics. So we have access within the research centers to very rich and interesting databases that our students, either master or PhD students, might use in developing their own master and PhD research, as well as usually the research centers have access, has, have budget, research budget to support scholarship to students. So in addition to database supervision, developing the specific research in the interest of the research center, they also receive a scholarship because we have some fundings within the research centers to pay for students' scholarship. So this is a very rich environment, whether our students can benefit most from the research centers, as I just said, helping in creating this quality and rigorous training offered at ABAPI. Uh, the third pillar, inspiring academic experience. I selected two items to discuss here. here I will introduce you the graduate seminars. I just said that all master and PhD students are demanded to attend to and participate actively during one year in our graduate seminars. What are the graduate seminars? Graduate seminars are sessions that we offer usually on Wednesdays morning when we invite professors, visiting professors, to present their research projects that are still underway or those papers that they have just published. So brand new, fresh research. And so those 
these professors come here, present the research they have done, in, uh, just concluded, or they are still performing, they're still working on, we call the work in progress or the working papers they have. And so they present the background of the research. What were their main drivers? What were their main goals? The difficulties, the challenges they faced performing such a research, the choices they made in building the research, of course, the methods, the way they analyzed the data, the conclusions they got, the expected potential impact of the research, and so on. And after all, when we finished discussing the paper, the research specifically said, uh, students may have the, have, do have the opportunity to ask any question they want to the research, to the visiting professor. Like, how is the academic environment at your university? How could I apply for a uh, uh, visiting uh, doctoral stay or a master's stay at your university? How could I apply for a PhD program at university? How could I apply for a job market in your university? Or based on the visiting professor's experience, they can answer not only related to his specific university where he's affiliated to, but about any other university that he has deep knowledge or the country where he or she comes from. So I really suggest it's a very rich environment. Usually the students that are not anymore required to attend to those graduate seminars, they still continue engaged and participate in the graduate seminars because graduate seminars is mandatory only for the first year students. But PhD students stay with us for four years. So there are three other years in the, while they are enrolled in the program that they are not required to attend to, but they are also welcome to attend to the graduate seminars. And I might say that during the pandemic, well, the, due to the fact that the course is entirely online through Zoom, uh, we have received very, very interesting researchers uh, from different countries since they are, they don't need to travel <laughs> since we are online now. Uh, so we are receiving very, really, very, very top uh, and very productive researchers in our graduate seminars uh, for free, as I mean, they don't need to, no, 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 no travel cost and no travel uh, challenges on scheduling and so on. So we benefit in somehow uh, for this uh, environment of online training, specifically in the graduate seminars, as I can say. And also for an inspiring academic experience, I might talk about the international exchange programs that we have. Uh, the most famous one is the doctoral stay that here in Brazil used to call doutorado sanduíche. So our students are in, in, in encouraged to take a doctoral stay abroad after the, the eighth quarter of the, the program. As, long, as soon as they, they get the approval on their conceptual paper. So PhD students, during the first two years, you shall take all the courses and get the approval on your conceptual paper. Once you get the approval on your conceptual paper, we stamp your passport, let me say that, and then you can travel abroad for a doctor's stay, a doutorado sandwich. Usually, PhD students spend less than 12 months abroad, so they can do part of their research abroad, part of their research, and finish their research here in Brazil, and defend their PhD dissertation. Uh, talking about scholarship and financial support for the doctoral stay, students shall apply to doctoral stay uh, scholarships provided by the government, CAP, CNPq, FAPERG, usually. Uh, but here in, at FGV, we have a specificity that our program received a very reasonable uh, research funding from CAPS named CAPS Print, 
Print is the program for internationalization from CAPES, and where our students shall not apply to any scholarship from uh, doctoral state scholarship provided by CAPES, but by, they might identify among the print projects that BAPI has allowed by, by CAPES, whether their research interest, their research focus, and the universities where they want to go are connected to those print projects that we have approved. If you feel, if you fit, there is a matching between your research interest and the university where you want to go, and the focus of those print projects that we have and the associated universities that we have, if there is a matching, a matching, it's okay, it's easy, and you go and your funding is almost sure that you get it. However, if there is a mismatch between your research interest in the universe where you want to go and the projects that we have, we will need to develop another source of resources to fund for your doctoral stay if you cannot get a, a scholarship from CNPq or from FAPERG. And then we can discuss that later. Uh, talking about the master students, master students are also encouraged to take, let's say, a master stay, um mestrado sanduíche, if we have that, uh, abroad. In this case, it would take place during the second year of your master, because during the first year, you shall take all the courses, take all the credits from the courses, method courses, track research courses, and elective courses and get the approval from your supervisor on your research project. Once you have the approval from your supervisor on the research project and had concluded all the courses, like we stamp your, your passport and you can go abroad to do some research outside FGV, outside Brazil. In this case, my, we suggest that our master students stay at uh, no longer than six months abroad. So you can return, finish your studies, finish your dissertation, uh, master thesis, and defend it. And last, for, but not least, the fourth pillar on why you should consider applying for our master or PhD program in administration is the quality of our students. I'm really proud of our students that we have here. They are, I might say, top-notch students. And one, one attribute to categorize these students, I might say it's the diversity of our students. They are diverse in many aspects. For instance, geographically diversity. Uh, we have students not only from the Rio de Janeiro city, we have students from different cities in Brazil, different states from Brazil. We have students from different countries. For instance, now today, we have students from Russia, Azerbaijan, China, uh, taking the courses with you with, in our classrooms or due to the fact that we are online in our okay, at Zoom sessions, we have students from Brazil and three other countries as far as I know. But there are many students from many other countries that had just graduated from our master of PhD students, like China, Italy, Poland, uh, France. Uh, I never remember everyone. I should not name them. Germany and so on. So we have different students from different countries uh, uh, working, doing research, studying together. And this is an amazing opportunity. As well as our students have a diverse background, academic background. Due to the fact that this is a master and PhD in administration, uh, it's expected that most of our students have, hold a bachelor in administration. But this is not the case for everyone. We have students with their bachelor in accounting, economics, law, engineering, mathematics, physics. We have students from the field of medicine, 
uh, I said engineering, I guess. So, so we have students from different areas, different fields. And this is also a very rich environment to, to, do, to study and to do research because you can have students from different, seeing the same phenomena under different perspectives. And it's really good, cool, really good to, to, to build research together. Talking about money, the fees and the scholarships. I will read this slide. Tuition fee. All students accepted for the master and PhD program will be accepted from any fees and duties. So what do I mean here is that we do not charge any tuition free from any student from the master or PhD program. That's it. You pay nothing to study with us. On the top of that, you might receive a scholarship. The program offers study grants to students for their upkeep based on the student's progress, performance, and full commitment studies uh, under the program. So if you perform well and you are fully dedicated to the program, on the top of not paying any tuition fee, you shall receive a scholarship. And then this scholarship uh, worth is in reais, Brazilian official currency, 1,500 reais, 1,500 reais for the master students, and, or 2,200 reais, 2,200 reais for PhD students. So, your investment is your time, your dedication, your commitment, and we really believe in your success and we hope for your success. So, you don't need to invest any money to study with us, but your commitment. This is what we, most, uh, we value at the most here. Additionally, you shall have the opportunity to receive additional scholarships. I mean, if you are full-time dedicated to the program and you perform well, as I said, you will receive the scholarship. Either the scholarship might be paid by CAP, CNPK, or FAPERGE, or by FGV's own resources, our budget here. Uh, but if you, in addition to that, if you want to double your scholarship, you can join on TA as a TA assistant or a research assistant in, to the faculty in the program. You can work on research within the, the developed by those research centers I just presented to you. And then you will have the opportunity to receive an additional scholarship. So I might say that a master's student might receive a scholarship from CAPS and PQFAPERG of, say, 1,500 reais, plus an additional scholarship at the same amount if it engage on TA activities or research assistant activities. So your income would get up to, let's say, 3,000 reais uh, free of charge because it's not tax taxable, not taxable at all. And you won't pay anything to study here with us. If you are a PhD student, we would be talking about 2,200, 2, yes, plus 2,300, 4,400 has to study. It's definitely not bad considering the Brazilian environment and economic situation that many organizations face here in Brazil and all over the world. Talking about the selection process, I'm about to finish. We organize the selection process under two rounds. The rounds are identical. You can choose if you apply for the first round or to the second round. You don't need to apply to both. You can apply either to one or another. Uh, the application period for the first round is already open and it goes until July 23rd. Then we will analyze your documents. And if you are among the best students that applied in this round, we will interview you. And the interviews are scheduled to the first week of August. And then we will launch the final results from this entire pro uh, selection process on August the 6th. And if you are approved, if you are selected, 
you will be invited to enroll in the program during the second week of August. However, classes will start only on January 2022. Yes, that's it. We are still in May 2021. But uh, classes will start only on January 2022. Why? Because this is the first round that I'm presenting you. And why do you organize this selection process, at least the first round, so early? Uh, the final result will be launched on the first week of August, and the classes will start on the beginning of January next year. Simple. This first round is focused most on students from abroad that will need to work on their visa to study and live in Brazil, or, and or arranging their travels their travel and uh, uh, leasing an apartment here in Rio de Janeiro to live in Brazil, in, in Rio, while they were taking classes. So that's why we are arranged the first round so early. So you will receive the final result on the beginning of August, and you have almost five months to work on your visa and leasing arrangements and so on to move to Brazil. As well as this first round also focus on students that work, that are professionally engaged with an employer, and then they will need to arrange with their employer uh, a leave for studying. So we hope that these five months between you receive your approval from the final results until classes start, you have enough time, five months, to get, to get uh, and arrange with your employer your leave to study with us. If you miss the first round, there is no problem. There is still the second round available for you. The applications will go until December the 15th. Uh, we will analyze your documents. If you are among the, the best uh, candidates that applied in this round, you will be uh, invited for the interviews. Interviews will take place just before Christmas, as well as the final results will be launched. And you have in the week between Christmas and New Year's Eve to enroll in the program because classes start uh, the beginning of January. That's why the first round is most uh, dedicated to students that work, the candidates that work, and or candidates from abroad. So they have time to arrange their life in order to move to Brazil or get the sabbatical from their employers. Because if you, if you wait until the second round to apply, you will, might probably not have time to manage all those bureaucratic activities. But if you are Brazilian, if you live nearby, it's okay, you can wait for the second round and that's it. Now, the selection process is uh, organized, as I said, in two rounds, but both rounds, as you saw on their calendar, they are like this, they really are the same structure, they have the same structure and their structures are based on two phases. First of all, candidates apply. The application process, notice the deadline for application, July 23rd or December 15th. You will upload this application process, many documents. The list comprises your undergraduate diploma, the standard tests from GMAT, GRE, Unpad or Unpack, your English proficiency certificate from IELTS, TOEFL, Cambridge, or APT from British Council, the updated version of your curriculum latch, your latch's curriculum, a letter of intention, like a motivation letter, why do you want to study with us? Uh, uh, master or PhD in administration, uh, two recommendation letters. All these documents are in English, okay? And you shall choose two among those four research tracks. 
uh, in order of preference. So you shall present your first best option of those four research tracks and your second best choice. Why do we ask you to present two choice? Because uh, depending on during the interviews, I mean, sometimes we identify students that misunderstood the focus of each of these research tracks. And then they want one track, but they marked another because they misunderstood their meanings. Or they are really in the gray zone. They are not pretty sure if they want uh, one on another. They would be happy working with either one or another. And then based during the interview, we have the opportunity to take uh, to discuss many issues with students, mainly research issues with students, with candidates. And we also identify who is the supervisor, who will be your supervisor. And more, in most situations, we have students that would be very happy working with one another within one another research track, but based on the availability of supervision in one track higher than another, so students migrate from one to the second best, to the first best choice, to the second best choice of research tracks, okay? And if you are applying for the PhD program, in addition to all of that, you shall also upload your pre-project of dissertation, only if you are applying for the PhD, okay? I would really recommend you going to our website, reading the specificities of all these documents, understanding specifically what we require and how you shall upload them. Then we will analyze all your documents and we will select some of those that apply in each round for the interview. Though the best candidates shall be interviewed. And then we will send you an email, invite you for a specific date and time for your interview. Interviews will be held in English through an online platform most probably through, through Zoom, but could be any other one, like Skype, Teams, whatever. Most probably by Zoom. You will receive a link. Just need to click in the link, to, to click in the link and then you will join to the, our platform. And who will interview you? Do you remember that you shall select two research tracks? So base it on the research tracks that you has chosen you have chosen while you apply it to the program. I will invite the research, the faculty members that do research within that, within those two research tracks to interview you. So that's why selecting properly the research track you have more interest on in is very important because you will be interviewed by those that research on those two or either one of those two research tracks, okay? So finally, if you have any additional question, you can please write it right now uh, in Slido, and I will discuss your, let's start the Q&A session right now. But if you later, uh, when, uh, just when we finish the session, you still have more doubts, please feel free to contact us. You have the phone number available, you have the email available for you here. And I do exhort you, take a look on our website. Most importantly, the research tracks we offer, the faculty members, the kind of research we do, the research centers, what kind of research we do in each of these research centers, and the regulations of the program. Read the regulations of the program. There in the regulations, we state, all the duties of the students, so you will know exactly what we expect from you. Okay, there are so many details in the regulations that I wouldn't have time to present here today. I just brought the most important one, but there are other details that you shall read before you apply. Okay, so let's start the Q&A session, please. Remember, questions through Slido. Question one, what does FGV ABAP 
what does FGV ABAP hope to find on applications motivation letter? Good question. The answer, why do you want to study with us? Why are you keen to spend two years of your life on a master program? Or why are you keen to spend four years of your life on a PhD program? And why are you looking, seeking for a master or a PhD in administration? And why at ABAPI? Mainly that. Remember, if you are a, P, a candidate for the PhD program, you shall upload your pre-project. If you are a candidate for the master program, you shall not upload a pre-project. However, if you want, you, you will, I mean, a candidate for the master program, you can present your broad research idea, what kind of research you intend to do while you, you as a, while you study with us, I mean, as a master thesis, you can make some comments about that on our uh, motivation letter as well. Okay, what kind of research you are interested in, which kind of methods you would like to develop most on your research and so on. You can say everything like that on your motivation letter. Question two, is it possible to conciliate the program and professional life? As I said, it's no, this program is designed as a full-time program. This program is designed for students that dedicate themselves 100% to the program fully committed to the program. However, we accept students that work. We accept students that have a professional life. Yes, we do accept. However, I unfortunately might say that most of them don't conclude the program properly. I mean, most of those that work and try to reconcile family life, working life, studying life, and other lives, if I have, uh, fail. And then they ask to quit the program. It's very common. I'm, not, I'm sad to say that, but that's the truth. So to answer a question, is it possible to reconcile studying activities with professional activities? Yes, it is possible. But it is, I might say, kind of an exception, okay? Because the program is designed for students fully committed to the program. So if you work, you are welcome. However, you shall never say, oh, I could not do some, some activities because I was working. I could not attend the class because, because I, I was working. I'm so sorry. That's not an excuse, okay? Uh, question three, graduate seminar is an open event or exclusive for students? Oh, I see. It seems like you are really interested in the program and you would like to start through the graduate seminars. Okay, so that is a good deal. Graduate seminars are mandatory for first year students, master students and PhD students. However, it's not a closed event. It's not exclusive for our students. So uh, students from any other program or either even those that are not PhD or master students yet, you that are here on our, uh, uh, on our webinar, if you are interested to join our next session of the graduate seminar, take a look on our website. There is a specific page related to the graduate seminar. And then you shall enroll in that session, you ask to, to register yourself in that specific session. You read the paper in advance, join to the, to the meeting. Nowadays, it's much easier due to the fact that we are online, unfortunately, because of the pandemic. And then you can connect through Zoom and attend to our graduate seminar session. You are welcome for free. Question four. A student a scholarship is available for all approved students or is there any other process for a scholarship? Good question. A scholarship is available for all 
enrolled a student, not only approved, enrolled in the program that is eligible for the scholarship. So in order to be eligible for a scholarship, in addition to being enrolled in a program, you shall not have any professional activity. You shall not have any professional engagement with any employer. And then you are in the team. You will you shall receive a scholarship either from CAPS and PQ or FAPERG. And if in the most worst scenario where there is more student than scholarships available, FGV will work on providing you a scholarship with its FGV's own budget. Okay. Now, maintaining the scholarship. One thing is once you enroll the program, if you don't work, you shall receive a scholarship. Then maintaining the scholarship will depend on your situation, like continue your full-time dedication to the program and uh, getting uh, A's and B's in the, in the courses, concluding the, being updated to the course, like taking uh, and, and, and performing all your duties as a student properly, uh, you shall continue receiving your scholarship. But if you get many C's and D's, you will most probably you will lose your scholarship, okay? So based on performance to keep the scholarship. Is there a chance of keeping attending classes online even after presential attendance is allowed? That is the question that I don't have the answer to. I'm so sorry. So the situation is due to, I don't like the term social distancing, due to physical distancing, uh, we cannot offer classes inside. So the building is closed. Therefore, while the pandemic lists, we will keep online. Once the authorities allow us to go back to the building and FGV main administration, top administration allows us to return to, to the classrooms, we will do so. And then how we will go back to the physical building, that is still an open question. What we are considering is to have or to apply a hybrid model. What do I mean by a hybrid model? Some students come into the building, attending class within the classroom, in the classroom, while other students attending to classes online through Zoom. But notice that it's very important. Uh, it's very important to note that Although we are through Zoom, it's not an online course. We have a presential course on timing. Every time we connect classes from 9 to, to 12, from 2 to 5 in the afternoon, from Mondays to Thursdays, step classes on Fridays morning or after, or even Saturdays morning. Classes are not recorded, so you shall attend to the classes, although through Zoom. This is the main important uh, uh, issue to make it very clear that it is not, not an online NBA, an online master program. No, it's a traditional master program, a traditional PhD program. Due to pandemic, we are offering it through Zoom, but in real time. It's very important information. And then we are considering, but there is just, this is just an idea we had not implemented nor decided yet if we will be able to work on a hybrid model when we are allowed to go back to the, to the building. I, I hope I had answered that question. What's expected on the pre-project dissertation? Only for PhD program, PhD candidates, okay? So if you are a PhD candidate 
you shall present your pre-project dissertation. What is that? What do we expect to read from there? A small document, I don't remember the size, but there is a size constraint, no more than a certain amount of pages and words or characters, I don't remember. You can see that on the website, but we would like to see like a title for your research, the goal, what the objectives, what are the objectives of your research, the main objectives, the secondary objectives of your research, uh, the method you would like to apply, why that research question is so important, uh, the consequences of your research to society, what's the relevance to society for, of your research, uh, how your research will help uh, make a society better, uh, the limitations of your research, all research has many limitations. What you foresee is the main limitations from your research. So the main idea of your research, what is it? I suggest you take a look on the Emerald abstract structure and use the, the topics from the Emerald abstract as the headings of your pre-project, okay? Please read our website. There are more specific information so, and tips about the pre-project that you shall upload if you are applying for the PhD program. What is evaluated during applications inter applicants interview? Uh, the com it's very difficult to, to, to identify which students we, per we perceive as more committed to the program or less committed to the program, but we try to assess that. The potential commitment the candidate presents, the maturity, how mature is this candidate for a PhD program? If we don't identify uh, a candidate as mature as we would expect for a PhD, we shall recommend you to take the master although you might already have a master program, a master certificate, a master diploma. Um, the commitment, the maturity, uh, what brings you here? What, what's the takeaway you expect to, to take home after two years from master or four years from a PhD program? And these kind of things. And your behavior, how you behave uh, during the interview, we try to access as a proxy of your potential future behavior in classroom. Okay. Okay, I heard that the, the video is quite uh, not good, but the audio seems to be okay. So I'm, I'm glad that the audio is okay. No more questions. Further information, please email us at the missions is BAPI at FGVBR. Oh no, there is one more question. I'm afraid to apply to the master program. Afraid, why? You might have nothing to lose. Uh, I don't know if my curricula is what FGV is looking for. I'm from Brazilian Navy. Do you think it's a negative point? Definitely not. It's not because you are from the Brazilian Navy or the Brazilian Army or the Brazilian Air Force. There is no, Sem preconceito, gente, por favor. We, we don't judge you because you work for the Navy or any other public sector organization or any private sector company. Uh, what we really want to know, as I said, is in the first phase, your performance on those exams, GMAT, GRI, GR, uh, UMPAD, UMPEC, and on the English proficiency exams, your curricula, have you published any paper if you're applying for the PhD program, most importantly, uh, and then identify your commitment. If you work, I don't care if it's for the Navy or another organization, we will need to see how you expect to get a leave from your employer. So it's also very important. If you don't get the leave from your employer, 
it's a riskier uh, candidate uh, because you might quit the program before defending your thesis or your dissertation. So that's a concern that we have. But if you can demonstrate during the interview that you will be able to reconcile all those lives that you have, like academic life, family life, professional life, it's okay. If you are out, if you are an outstanding candidate based on all the other characteristics that we evaluate, although you work and don't and don't expect to receive a leave, we we may accept you, approve you, and select you. But if you don't perform well, you will be invited to quit the program. Is like that, okay? And talking about quitting the program, I should not say that today because I'm trying to convince you to apply. But I might say, I'm sorry. Uh, read the regulations. For instance, there is one issue there. If you get so many these, you fail the, any course or a certain number of courses, or if you although approve it in the courses, you get C's a very low grade. And so if you collect C's and D's from the courses, you will also be invited to quit the program. So your performance is very important, not only to keep the scholarship if you are eligible to a one, but also to keep your, to maintain your regular, regular situation within the program. So you shall get A's and B's in the courses, okay? This is another issue. That's why you, uh, many candidate students that work try to reconcile those multiple activities and they sometimes fail. And if they fail too much, they will be invited to quit the program. Okay, but not due to the fact that you are from Navy or from the public sector, private sector. I don't care about that. Just the fact that you are not full time committed to the program. That's it. If you don't have more questions, don't we don't have any more questions? Are you sure? Okay, so please send us an email and and or call us. You have the phone number there in the slide, and you are welcome to either contact your uh, take a look on the website, see the faculty, identify which faculty member you would like to be your supervisor, send him or her an email. Discuss your research project, your idea, even if you are only applying for the master, you can contact your potential uh, supervisor in advance to discuss research ideas, present yourself, and then, uh, and then apply, okay? So I hope to see all your applications and see you on the interviews. Bye-bye.